think it might take a second or something. Uh, but no, it's already happening. Wow, how awesome is that? Hey, Jan here, let's build Shopify. And today you will learn how you can set up some custom user inputs on the product page. And we will also have some advanced logic behind them because that was a thing many of you have requested. And if you've been on this channel for a while, then you might know that I also have an older video on this. Uh, and we were setting up some basic user inputs and it was completely for free. You could still use that, but it also came with some limitations that we are going to overcome today. And many of you already have gotten some great results from the last video. And so did Neil, who was actually so happy that he insisted to send me one of his personalized products. And usually I wouldn't share my private address, but this time I made an exception and I can no longer wait to test it out. So here I have some hot water. Let's pour that in. I think it might take a second or something. Let's see. Uh, but no, it's already happening. Wow, how awesome is that? And uh, so apparently he took a screenshot of me and I also got this badge, the best programmer ever. So I guess now it's kind of official. Um, but no, I'm just kidding. I know people that do a million times better than me, but still I'm feeling very honored and this means the world to me. So of course I will add a link to your shop down in the video description. And oh, here we also have something in German. It says, alles beginnt mit einem Lächeln, which means something like, it all starts with a smile. And that couldn't be more on point. So again, thank you, Neil. I truly love this. And let's get into the video. All right, so just to give you a small outline for this video, first we are going to implement the product page itself, and then we can have a look at these custom pricing rules. And last but not least, we will implement the conditional logic to hide or show user inputs depending on previous selections. And actually we can do all these things by using one single app that is called Bold Product Options. And you will find a link to it down in the video description. And just to stay fully transparent with you, this is an affiliate link. And that means if you use that, I will earn a small commission, most likely going to be invested in some new coffee. But I just want you to know that on this channel, I will never recommend any software or service that I haven't personally used and tested and found to be of good value. So the app comes with 14 days of free trial, but it would usually cost $50 a month for all the premium features. And I know everyone likes tutorials that can be applied for free, but there are just some features that are impractical, if not impossible to implement without the use of an app, because sometimes you need to run code from the backend, and that is just something we can't do in our theme files. Now, coding an app like this is not something that anyone could show you in a 20 minute video, nor is it something that I could do by myself in two weeks. So technically your only options would be to either go with a professional app development agency and build that app private for you. But I think this would start somewhere in the range of 10 to 15,000 at the very least for some decent quality. Or you would go with a public app like this. And if you compare these $50 subscription fee to the 10K, then you could already use that app for 200 months. And this would be around 16 years. So what I'm really trying to get across here is that I'm a big fan of validating your product idea first for the cheapest cost possible. And that could either be using my free video on these basic inputs or maybe even the 14 days trial of this app. And only if you have actual proof that your product sells, then you can afford to make these investments that in the end will pay off for themselves. And if you're still not sure if an app would fulfill your needs, then one thing that I like to do sometimes is scroll down to the review section, then just pick any good one, jump over to Google and add plus Shopify. And then I will find their store and see how they use that app. So let's check that out. So here it seems like we have a store selling high ticket jewelry. So let's see if we can find a product page. So you can see that they have all the product options to the right. And it seems like they worked a lot with these drop down menus. And you could also notice that the price gets adjusted with different selections and they also have some conditional logic. So I bet the app is pretty much worth for them. And now we can finally start and install that app. Uh, the instructions are pretty straightforward and I already went ahead and did this for myself. And one thing that I would also recommend before testing a new app is just going to your online store and then themes. And here you could just duplicate your live theme so that you have a backup in place if an app is not working as intended. So next I will navigate to the app dashboard and from there we should be able to access our account settings. You can find them right here. And here we can unlock all these premium features that we are going to use during the video and we are on the 14 days trial anyways, so you can just upgrade. So after that, we can now go to the need help section. And this is also where you would find the support team if you have any questions. But for now, we are interested in the liquid installation. And I would recommend you go with the automatic install first because I never had any issues with that in the past. But if anything goes wrong, the support team guarantees that they will set up things for you, but it might take another day or two. So let's start the automatic one. 
And here you can select the theme that you want this app to work with. For me, it's the live theme. So I will just start to update the code and then it will do its magic behind the scenes. So let's wait for that to finish. And now the installation seemed to work just fine. And we can get into the fun stuff and create our first set of new options. So right here, we can start to create a new option set. And let's give it a meaningful name. Maybe we could go with custom prints. And down below, we can select all the products that we want these options to be applied for. So right now, I only have one single product in my store and it is called custom print. I could also show you that really quick. So I just uploaded a few images and down at the bottom, I have a few variants and I only set these for the base dimension or base canvas dimensions. And anything else will be priced with conditional rules via the app. So let's go with this one. And then we save the selection. And now that we have at least one product selected, we can start to create our new options. And we can do that right here. And for the first one, we could go with material, which will be the material to print on. And right here, you can select all the different types of inputs that we have available. So I think for this one, we could go with drop down. And the first value could be poster, which will be free of charge. And then we could also have PVC or maybe acrylic glass. And last but not least, just regular cotton canvas. And on the right side, we could also check if one of these values should be pre-selected. But for now, I will leave that. And below all these options, you will find another checkbox to adjust the price. So let's go with this option for the PVC print, the acrylic glass print and the canvas. And right here we can enter the extra charge and let's go with, let's say eight, 12 and 16. And then you can save this first option block. Might take a second, but after it finished, we can also select if this option should be required by the user or not. And for now I will go with it and then we can create the next option. So the next option is going to be regarding the frame. And later on, this will also serve as an entry point for our conditional logic, because if the user doesn't want a frame at all, then we shouldn't present him with further options regarding the frame color, for instance. And for this one, we could go with input type of radio buttons. And let's go with none, or if the user doesn't want a frame at all, or maybe two centimeter, which could be the default one and four centimeter, which would be extra thick. And then we could adjust the price with an additional four euros, let's say. So save this one as well. And after it's done with the saving, we can also set this to required. In our next option, we could now ask the user for his or her preferred frame color. And I think a good input type would be the single choice swatch because they add a little bit of color to the product page and usually look super clean. And the available colors are going to be, let's say black, white, and natural. And now you could either use their integrated color picker to generate a swatch by yourself. And you could use up to four colors. Let me demonstrate that really quick. So for example, you could have red and then another bluish and maybe green and red again. So this is in case your product comes with some sort of pattern, then you could illustrate it right here, but you could also go with single color swatches, of course. Um, or you would have the option to upload an image and that's exactly what I will do. And just to save your time, this is what the option looks like after I uploaded all my custom images and just make sure you use small file sizes and ideally you want to use square images. And then we can save this option set as well. And after all the changes are saved, I would also set this option to be required. Now, last but not least, I would like to add one further checkbox to the product page, just so that you have seen that input type as well. So I will go with the single choice checkbox and maybe you can offer some unique image effects like post processing and maybe you could offer to grayscale the image. So let's go with grayscale image and this one will be free of charge so we can just save it. And now that we are done, we can save the whole option set for the first time. All right, so now that we are done with that, I think now is a good time to view our product page and see what it looks like right now. But I just want you to note that whenever you create a new option set or you modify an existing one, it might take five to 10 minutes to sync up all the changes with the app server and then your store. So if you don't see a change right away, don't freak out and panic, but rather just be patient. So after jumping to the front end, this is what the current product page looks like and actually all the inputs seem to work just fine. 
but I feel like there are a few things that we could even improve on. So for instance, I would like these labels to sit on the same height as the input button itself. And then we also have to do something about this weirdly placed total extras. And I feel like this would make way more sense if it integrates into the product price or maybe sits next to it. And then we also have to make our conditional logic work. And I think we can start with just that. Now, in order to create the conditional logic, we jump back to the app dashboard. And here we can find the list of conditions. And now we can select our option set. Now we only have one, which is custom prints. And then we can create a new condition. And this dialog is pretty much self-explaining. So if the user selection regarding the frame is equal to none, then we want to hide the question regarding the frame color. And then we can just save that condition. And now our new condition appears in that list. And again, it might take a few minutes to synchronize. But if you don't want to wait for that, one thing that worked extremely well for me is just going to the option set again and then open edit and just resave it. So this should force the synchronization process. And then we can check back on the front end. And here you could see that our new condition gets applied and it works well. The frame color is hidden when none is selected. And I feel it would even make more sense if none would be the default pre-selected value on page reload. So you could set this up in the option set, but that's just a small thing. Everything else seems to work just fine. All right, so next we are going to tackle this alignment issue and I can also show you where it's coming from. So if you just right click on any of these inputs and then go to inspect, this would bring up the Chrome developer tools and you can see we have our input highlighted. And on the right half, we can read that all the inputs within the product form, so this applies debut theme wide, should have a minimum height of 44 pixel. And you could also play around with that value to see what it does. But I feel like we should reset or set this minimum height to zero for all the bold options. And we could do so by referencing this input by the CSS class of its outer container. And in this case, the outer container with the class of bold option would serve pretty well. You can see it highlighted in the page right now. And let me show you how I would set things up. So once again, back in the app dashboard, we can now navigate to the display settings. And here you would find a few further options regarding the styling. So for instance, we could change the swatch appearance to be circular. But what I'm actually interested in is the custom CSS box down at the bottom. And here we can now target the outer container that we've just looked up on the front end. And the name was bold underscore option. And just make sure to add this little dot in front just to indicate that we are referencing a CSS class. And then I want to grab every input element that lives within such a container. And I will add a pair of curly brackets. And in between, I can set the minimum height to zero and then give this a save. And after another refresh on the front end, we should now see that these values sit on the same height. And we also have our rounded swatches. How cool is that? Now, I also think that we can add a little bit of a vertical spacing in between the option title and the option values. And the process would be very similar. So I would just inspect these elements and then find out what the CSS class of the outer container is. And in this case, it's bold underscore option underscore element. And then I would just grab this CSS class and copy it to my clipboard. And then we can jump back to the app settings and add another CSS rule. So just make sure to start with the dot and then paste your clipboard. And then we add a pair of curly brackets again. And this time I think a margin to the top of let's say 10 pixel would do well. And then save it again. And after the next refresh, we can see a small gap in between the headline and the values. And I think this looks a lot cleaner. Now, the last thing that we have to work on is the total extra cost. And as I mentioned earlier, I would like to sit it next to the original price, or maybe it can even add up to it. And therefore, or in order to make this work, we need to provide a truly unique identifier for this price element so that the app knows where to hook in. And now it becomes a little bit challenging because out of the box, the W theme wouldn't provide such a unique identifier for its price element. And if we inspect that, you would see that it uses CSS classes like price item and price item regular, which is actually pretty generic. And if you would have, let's say, a few recommended products down at your product page, then you would also display the price right there and they might have the same CSS class and then it would no longer be unique. Now, what we actually need to do to get this to work is jump to our theme files. And right here, we have this little action button and then we can go to edit code. And what I'm looking for is the product template. So once this is loaded, I can search for product dash template. And in here, I will now search for the price element. You can just pull up the search bar by pressing control and F like find. 
and then I will search for price. And here you can see we also we already have a container of class product price. And in between there is a snippet included, which is also called product price. So we need to follow that path and search for a snippet called product dash price. And it's right here. Now this price snippet is exactly what renders the price to the page. And if you scroll down a bit, you can already see the same generic container that I showed you on the front end, which was price item and price item regular. And I assume that the theme includes this snippet everywhere where it wants to display the product price in some way. And now we have to find a way to add a unique identifier to this element, but only if the snippet is included from the product template. Hope this makes sense. So what I could do right here is just add another liquid variable. So I will do double curly brackets and then also double closing curly brackets. And the name could be bold underscore selector. And most of the time this value would be empty. But if we include the snippet from our product template, then we could pass this variable to the snippet and then it won't be empty. So right within that include statement, I could add a comma to the end and then pass this new variable, which we call bold underscore selector. And the value should be equal to, let's say, bold total underscore price. And then we can save it. And we also have to make sure to save our other snippet as well. So one last time in our app dashboard, we can now go to the front end settings. And instead of selecting the default price setting, we can now use add to price or append to price. Depends on what you prefer. But both ways, we would need to add our new custom and unique selector and then we can save these and then we check back on the front end and after the next refresh now the extra cost should add up to the original price and it seems to work just fine perfect and if you made it to this point i think you can be pretty proud of yourself and i think we can bring this project to a close so thank you for watching and i really hope you learned something new if you have any questions please let me know down in the comment section i always try to answer as many as i can and if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, feel yourself invited to do so. Then I really hope to see you in the next. Bye.